So today in class we talked about what makes a sentence complete and we came up with that a sentence needs a subject and a predicate in order to be complete. Now today we're going to kind of take that idea one step further and we're going to talk about what other things make up sentences. So we can find something called a clause within a sentence. A sentence may have a multiple clauses or a sentence could just have one clause. So let's start with what is a clause. And anytime we talk about a clause, we're not talking about Santa Claus, we are talking about the clause that ends in an E. And this type of clause is a related group of words, and most importantly, this related group of words has both a noun and a verb. So we always need to understand that a clause, no matter what type of clause it is, has both a noun and a verb. So today we're gonna to be talking about two different types of clauses. The first clause that we're going to be talking about is something called an independent clause. And an independent clause is something that makes sense by itself. So we can think of an independent clause as something that can stand alone as a sentence. So we can have a sentence that is just made up of one independent clause. And here I have our example down at the bottom. I walked down the street. That is one single independent clause. It starts with our subject. We have a verb, walked, which is also our predicate. And this idea makes sense. It completes a thought. It can stand alone by itself. So anytime we're talking about an independent clause, I want you to think of it as something that can stand alone as a complete sentence. And so the next type of clause that we're gonna be talking about is called a dependent clause. And the issue with the dependent clause is that it is dependent on an independent clause to have it make sense. So when we take a look at dependent clauses, we will notice that they still have some sort of subject or a noun or pronoun, and they still have a verb in it. However, the issue with dependent clauses is even though they have a subject and even though they have a verb, they don't complete a thought, meaning that they don't make sense and they can't stand alone by themselves as a sentence. So if we take a look at our example at the bottom, it says, while I was working. This is a perfect example of a dependent clause. We still have our noun or pronoun in there, which is I, and we also still have a verb, or in this case, we have a we have a main verb and we have a helping verb, so was working. So we realize that here, since we have our subject and we have a verb, that we still have a clause. There's a dependent clause because it says, while I was working. While I was working, what happened next? We don't know. We need more information in order to make this thought complete. Therefore, it is a dependent clause. So on this slide, we have an example of how you can find both an independent and a dependent clause together in a sentence. So if we take a look at the part in green, we will realize that we have an independent clause. And it says, I walked down the street. And in red, we have a dependent clause, while I was listening to music. And we put when we put the two of them together, we are forming a complete sentence. I walked down the street while I was listening to music. It's a good sentence, it works. However, if we were to take away the part in red, that dependent clause, we would realize that that part in green doesn't need the part in red. It can function as a sentence all by itself. I walk down the street. It's a perfectly fine sentence. It works. However, if we were to take away the part in green, what we're left with is while I was listening to music. It's still a clause, however, it is a dependent clause, and we know that that dependent clause needs the independent clause in order to be able to be in order to be able to function as part of the sentence. So we, what we realize here is that dependent clauses, it still has a subject, in this case it's I, we still have a verb, was listening, however, it is a dependent clause because it needs that green part in order for it to make sense. So this slide just shows another example for you. So we have our independent clause that is underlined, and we have our dependent clause that is in italics, and together they make a sentence. Native Americans lived on the island until they were attacked. We realize that the part, underlying part stands alone by itself, so it's an independent class. Native Americans lived on the island. It works. And then that part in italics, until they were attacked. We realize it is a dependent clause. They is our subject. Were attacked is our verb. Or, respectively, our helping verb and our main verb. So we know that that part in italics needs the part that is underlined in order for it to make sense. So now that we know what our clauses are, and we know that we can find both an independent and a dependent clause in the same sentence, it is important to also know that depending on the order of how our clauses are coming in the sentence, they require different punctuation. 
So we're going to start with what happens when we have a dependent clause that comes before an independent clause. So what happens here is many dependent clauses will need to be separated by a comma if it comes before an independent clause. So if we take a look at our example, after I went to the store, there we have a dependent clause. It is coming before our independent clause, I decided to go to a friend's house. What happens is if we have our dependent clause that comes before our independent clause, we need to separate them with a comma. So we would need to say, after I went to the store, comma, I decided to go to a friend's house. So again, anytime you see a dependent clause coming before an independent clause, you always need to have that comma there. So on this slide, we have the opposite situation. So if a dependent clause is coming after an independent clause, there will not be any punctuation. So we actually pretty much have the exact same sentence in our first example, except the clauses are switched. I decided to go to my friend's house after I went to the store. Anytime the dependent clause is coming after the independent clause, there is no need for any punctuation, so there will not be a comma. So always remember, if the dependent clause is coming first, you will always put the comma. If the dependent is coming second, there is no comma. So on this slide, what I'd like you to do is just take a second to pause the video and I want you to practice identifying errors in these sentences. So take a look at each one of them and identify if there is an error with the comma placement between the independent and dependent clauses in each sentence or identify if the sentence is correct. And the answers will appear on the next slide. So in our first example, you should have put a comma between school and I. Before I go to school is our dependent clause. It becomes before our independent clause, I will eat breakfast. In our second example, you should have taken out the comma between good and until. My breakfast was good. That is an independent clause stands alone by itself. Until it got cold, that is our dependent clause. It is coming after our independent clause, so we do not need the comma. And in our last example, Unless there is a snow day, that is a dependent clause. It is coming before our independent clause. I will go to school tomorrow. Since it is coming before independent clause, we should stick a comma between day and I. If you have any questions, let me know.